Okay, so he's taped down onto the page. A little hard to see it's a tape, but there's tape all the way across the top. Here's a piece of graphite transfer paper. It's gray on one side and dark on the other. I would just handle a corner because it's going to get all over your fingers. You're going to put the gray side up and the dark side down underneath. Make sure it's smooth. And then I'm going to use a ballpoint pen um, to go over this. It just takes the pressure, and I'm going to test it. Um, if I trace over a little corner like that, I want to make sure it's up. Oh, it's coming through. That's what we want. It doesn't have to be very dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for areas of light. like I consider them little islands of light or jigsaw puzzle pieces of light, of dark, and of medium. So I'm going to see here's this piece of dark in his hair here. So I'm going to go up against it. It's You have to be not too casual. You can't just do kind of a sloppy loop here. I'm going to say the hair is going in this direction, so I'm going to cut into it a little bit in that direction. It kind of merges into his face here, so I'm going to take my best shot at where that black area ends approximately. And if it's not that clear, I'm going to make kind of a, a nervous raggedy line because that's it's gonna that tells me that it's, that's an area where it's going to blend in a little bit. So this is all this raggedy line. When I get to here, it's very definite. So I'm going to go right down the edge of his face, and then it goes out around his ear, and his sideburns here. A little bit of a raggedy edge because that's hair up the raggedy edge. If I see a little piece of hair going out, I'm going to flick out in that direction, and I'm going to say that piece of dark is that. Let's see if I went all the way around it. It's really important to pay attention to the direction the hair is going. Okay, now let's see what, if that's coming through. Yep, there it is. That's that area of dark. So we're going to break it down into basically maybe four areas. The highlights, like in his hair up here, um, there's a highlight on his nose, and like light grays. So there's a highlight in here, there's light grays, there's dark grays, and then there's dark shadows. So something like the hair, again, it's important to pay attention to the direction the hair is going uh, now and when you're shading because there's a highlight here, and I'm going to say basically that highlight lives kind of in a shape. And I'm going to cut in in this sort of raggedy direction of his hair so that I know that that highlight basically lives inside of this space. And that's going to look like that. A little hard to see that, but the camera makes it look way there. You can see it. So that's the area where the highlight lives. This is called shadow mapping. Okay, so we're going to go through this whole thing. A good way to start is probably just to get the outline of his head. So we could just go all the way around the outside. Don't be too casual. Just don't, it's not like a big you know, casual loop. It's going to go over there. It might be a little piece of hair flying off here. It's a little raggedy over here. Little pieces of his hair flying out in a certain direction down here. And we'll do go around his, his hair. Now, what gets tricky is you have to not put in lines that you think are there. You have to only put in things that you, that you see really are there. Um, We'll do the whole shape of the outside of his head. This is a very definite, clear line of where's the shape of his ear. Go around his here. Here's a piece of dark down here. I'm going to go around it. I'm not going to shade anything in or fill anything in. Um, here's a shadow, right? Where's that? And it jumps up over this. So we're going to get all the basics in here like this. It's going to give us a map. It's called shadow mapping, but really it's a map of the lights and darks and the mid-tones, which are the medium tones in there. So here's where it gets a little tricky. Um, I'm going to say there's, there, there's this light area on his, on his cheek over here. So I'm going to have to take a, my best shot as where does that stop and where does the next gray end? But you can see it's kind of in a, in a shape down here. So I'm going to say that ends... And there's the shadows of his eyelashes here coming out. So I'm going to create a raggedy edge here. And that light area basically lives inside. It's going to look a little different on the screen. 
Um, but that thing, and I'm going to create a raggedy edge here because I'm going to say, where does the light end and where does this dark start? So I'm going to say the brightest part of this is kind of in here. And this is a really raggedy line. That's my indicator that shows me that that area kind of blends in. So that's light. And then down below it, it's a little darker. So I'm going to take my best shot at where that ends. And every time we do this, we want to kind of create a closed loop. That gray kind of comes right up into his nose, and it ends along this highlight. And then that highlight, the brightest part, it's a little hard to see probably in the screen here, but the brightest part is actually right in here. That's a real bright part right there. And then there's a gray part here, and I'm going to sort of say, where does this gray part end? Well, it kind of wraps around his nose like this. There's a dark part below that. And this is going to kind of give me the shape of the highlights, the light areas, the dark areas, and the midtones. A couple important things on this. Don't put in details that you don't see. It's like if you can't see something in here, and it, again, it looks a little weird on the screen, but the darkest area in here, the, his eyebrow, here's the direction of his eyebrow. The direction of his eyebrow and the dark of his eyebrow actually merges right into the shadow in here. And I'm seeing a little more detail than you would see, um, than you guys see on this, probably on this movie thing. But that, it all becomes one big blob of dark stuff. And so your brain goes, oh, there's an eyebrow, that's a separate thing. There's an eye, that's a separate thing. There's an eyelid, that's a separate thing. But it's actually all one big blob. So it's going to look like that at first. At first. Again, I have to be careful I don't press too hard. I just want kind of ghost lines in here. Real important, if you can see highlights in here, it's hard to see, but there is a highlight in his eye over here. There's a highlight in his eye over here. Here's another thing. The black of his iris actually rolls right out and merges into the shadow that's out here, and that merges into his eyelashes. And your brain's really desperate to kind of outline separate pieces of this. But... That's all dark stuff. It's hard to see in there, but. So if I was shading this in later, this is just one piece of dark stuff. And the shadow merges in with his pupil, and that merges in with the edge of his eye, and that merges in with the shape it's actually the shadow and his lashes there. It's all like one jigsaw puzzle piece. And that actually merges in. There's another piece over here. So it's not like you're drawing separate things. You're drawing chunks. We're not going to shade in like that. I'm just doing it so you guys can see it. It's important to find, super important things to find are the lightest parts. Like there's on his lip here. Again, it looks different when I'm looking at the drawing and looking at the screen, but there's a really bright piece right here, and I'm going to keep it kind of this raggedy line, unless there is a definite smooth edge. Okay, so that piece right there, that, that highlight got put in. It's a little hard to see it, but it's right in here. All right. People tend to do nostrils. When they draw nostrils, they just draw in, you know, big, heavy duty. They say, oh, the nostril looks like, you know, a big black raisin like that. But that's not what I'm seeing here, right? What I'm seeing is, is the edge of his nose and then his nostril. It's a little dark in there, but then it phases out and gets a little, little bit lighter as it turns into this shadow. So I'm going to treat that shadow like an island. I'm just going to travel around it. We don't have to get all the details in right now. But that shadow... Once you get that shadow happening, once, you, once the shadow shades in later on, again, we're not going to do it right now, but uh, when the shadow shades in later, later on, um, that will form his nose. So I just put it in. It's like I'm not, a, I'm not drawing outlines around his nose because there really are no outlines around his nose. I'm really outlining and mapping the areas of light, medium, dark medium, and super dark, right? Um, but once that happens, I didn't draw outlines around his nose. I could say, okay, here's a, here's a medium gray over here. 
and that's going to go. It's better to put these things in a little too light at first. And that kind of wraps around the shape of his nose. And then here's the shadow of his nose, which actually flows right up into where his nostrils are. And when I put these things in, fitting the shadows up against it, you do not want to come back in and outline that because it's better to kind of go in one direction as you shade this in. And it's better to go many times. It's better to go over it lightly, you know, 50 times than it is to go over it like super heavy duty 10 times. So well, I really can't see that in the, this light. It's kind of crazy, even though I shaded it in. Um, there it is. You can see his nose will start to form just by drawing the shadows and the tones around it. Better to keep things a little too light. Um, what's going to happen is this is actually quite a dark area, and it flows up, and it gets darker in where his, his nostril starts to happen. And when I shade in this next area, it may make me come back because it's going to kind of blur together. Um, it's going to make me come back and get that darker stuff even darker because this gray, if I put this in, even though it's a it's a pretty light gray, when I put this in, it's going to merge with that gray underneath it. Get this, there it is. They sort of look the same right now, so I'm going to have to come back later and push this in a little further. But don't overdo it. It's better to keep it too light. We can always make things darker. Um, it's better if we don't have to get into erasing on here. All right, so again, to get his nose to form, it's not like I'm drawing outlines around it. I go, oh, here's here's a darker area, and when that pushes up against his nose, it's actually this area on his nose here is a, has a little bit of shading in it, and it doesn't really show up very much until this gets just a tiny bit darker, and then it starts to show up, and then as it gets down here, it actually gets a little bit lighter. Right, and that's going to start to show up. It's going to look weird for a while until we get all these tones in here. This looks a little wacky here. Those lighters, again, don't draw outlines around things. It's not like if there's a highlight there, don't draw an outline around it and then fill in. You just have to kind of come up to it. And this will start to happen. It starts to look a lot more eye-like. People go, oh, the whites of the eyes. They put, leave them white, but really the whites of his eyes are pretty dark. Depends on your photograph, but and very often what's going to happen is once we get this all mapped out, you're going to find that usually the white of the eye is going to go from a lighter tone, and as it gets into the corners, it's going to get darker, and that's going to start to form that eye. It's weird how the light hits this. Again, it's like... When I look in his eye, I don't draw in lines like, you know, drawing in an eye, like putting in these outlines the way I, I think, you know, like there's a shape and there's a thing in here. And, you know, it's not like that. It's like a lot of these tones merge together. And so I, there is kind of, there's, I can see the white of his eye and then it fades into dark. So let me map that in. So there's this light shape that's part of the white of his eye and then the corners gets real dark. And so there's part there that's light, and then it actually shades off into much darker in the corner. It's a little hard to see this on the screen. It's weird how it does that, but that's starting to get there. Okay.